I started with uh, B.C. McMahon as a, a wheeler, and I worked with my dad, David Jonah, for three years underground. Then I went on my own after that. I was able to get, go from a wheeler to uh, a miner. And I was put in at McMahon's, I was put in on the main level. And then we we started there off in one of the levels. And uh, I drove it ahead, and then every 40 feet, we would uh, break off by levels. And then that way there, we were able to keep other miners going. And the... Uh, the bi-levelers, they would turn around and uh, they would take a ban. As they were going in, they would take a ban 20 feet on each side of their level. And they would burn the coal out and then take the coal out that way. And what mud they had to shovel to keep a, a four-foot height, they would store it under, in, under the ban. And you take 20 feet, it don't seem like much, but you take, you lay on your shoulder underground, and that's how you got your 20 feet of coal out, by laying on your shoulder and throwing the coal back so that you got back to your level, you could uh, put it in a box and then go. Oh, it was quite a, quite a experience. And then they turn around and they would, uh, one day they would blast, at the very end of the day, they would have it all drilled and, uh, and blast it and turn around the next day would go in and load it all and get ready for the next, their drilling and everything, their dynamite and everything for the next day. I started working for uh, Roy Mills, DWNRA Mills. And uh, I worked there till NB Coal bought all the coal mines out, and we went under NB or, uh, NB Coal. Uh, I worked a lot on a 1350, and I worked a lot on uh, on the nine and the 500, and the 74, and and uh, and the 8200. The way they're built, uh, uh, I like the th the 8200 was my favorite machine. The thirteen, uh, the thirteen fifty, was a nice machine, but it was it was it was uh, built. Oh, the English style. It was built backwards, different different ways and stuff. But it was it worked pretty good too. But we didn't have it long. It was only here about six or eight years. Twelve sixty was a nice machine, but I didn't like the swing on it. But the boom was the best. It had the nicest boom. Working for the for Mills is then working through MB Gold and stuff and the shops and stuff. It was a great place to work. They had good shops and, and a good, you know, good bunch of people, good men to work with. You know, we got our work done and, you know, we made a pretty good living out of it.
here's the control room. This is the panel over here. Up there we have some alarms. Tells me if anything going on that I need to know about. I'll press the test button here so you can see what the alarm sounds like. Just testing my panel up there. Uh, we have a bunch of buttons here, controlling boiler feed pump, fans. It's an indication here of the steam flow. Right now it's about 500,000, 515,000 pounds an hour. And this is the water level in the drum and some other stuff there. Drum pressure, 1,560 pounds. Final steam, 1,450. And 996 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, steam temperature. The camera showing the fire in the boiler. You gotta have a visual by law. These are uh, controls for all my fuel. Burn coal here. There's uh, three sets of controls because you have uh, three pulverizers. Each pulverizer supplies uh, three sets of burners for nine burners in total. The flame scanner shows all the burners that they're all lit. If one happens to flame out, I get an alarm. It's a TV camera for security, but it's not working right now. That's our Christmas tree. Merry Ho Ho. That's part of the electrical panel here. And these switches control breakers. This is the uh, Showing the megawatts in the unit right now, we're putting out about 60 megawatts, which is the maximum, which is good. We have real good coal, so everything's working good. You can look out here and see the turbine. Uh, I guess I'm getting a reflection here. The front of the turbine there, steam goes through that part. And you can see part of the generator there. This part here, uh, uh, the steam turns that, which in turn turns your generator to create your electricity. Uh, and I'm getting a reflection there. Can't really show that. Oh, there's a couple computers here. This one gives me instructions from Fredericton. My load changes personal computer with a bunch of information on it and all that stuff. There, uh, it controls my coal power runoff. An alarm going up there, it's no big deal. Press the button there and acknowledge it. This is my desk. I have a bunch of readings to take. Stuff like that. Same as here, your readings to take every hour. The log book. I've got a couple telephones here. These are all contact me with the plant and other plants in the system. This is just the NB telephone. That computer controls the uh, electrostatic precipitator, which removes particulate from the flue gas. This computer just gives me all my different parameters. Gross generation, station service, back pressure, blah, blah, blah. This computer is showing all the um, sites. See, that's Grand Lake there. The plant's right there. There's four sites all around the plant, and they are monitoring the flue gas.
we had to apply for the pension, eh? And no, you can't get it. And so I ended up staying until I was 65 in order to get on pension. And you got it. I that. got it that time, and I <laughs> haven't been back since. It started started 1977, and I got on oiling on the 500, and from there I uh, was lucky enough to have an operator who showed me how to run very promptly. From there I went spare operator to operate in the 500 full time. When the 8200 come in to play in '79, I think it was, uh, a couple of the operators from the 500 left, and I got on full time on the 500. And I run the 500 until all this shake up stuff started happening at NBCO, you know, with layoffs and so on and so forth. And I got, uh, I got bumped off the 500 through seniority. So I said, okay, well, I'll go on the, I'll go, I'll go on the excavator. It's a piece of machinery. So then I gonna get bumped off the excavator. And uh, I said, okay. So I said, well, okay, fine, I'll go pump it. I said, nobody wants to pump it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that was going along fine. Then some vacancies started coming, the retirement started coming out. They started becoming vacancies on the 8200. Most of the small drains were shut down by this time. And, uh, yeah, they were shut down. I think the last two running was the 8200 and the 1260. So anyways, I knew the fellow that I had, I had oil briefly for on the 8200, he was retiring. So I put my name in, went back pumping. More openings come up. I put in, finally I got a job operating on the 8200 and for the life of me, I can't remember what year it was. Anyway, they operated the 8200 until basically the last day when it became was shut down. The Grand Lake Thermal Generating Station has been operating since 1931. It is the oldest fossil fuel burning plant in the province. It has the capacity to make up to 60 megawatts of electricity. Meanwhile, newer plants in the province can produce up to four to five times that amount. Although it is small, the station is an important source of employment for the nearby coal mining community of Minto. But UNB professor Dr. James Whitehead says it just doesn't make sense to keep the power plant open. Yeah, I believe it should be shut down and so does the uh, provincial government. They suggested they're going to be shutting it down by 2010 but they're not providing any time frame by which they're going to do, to do that. Uh, given the uh, small amount of power that's produced by that station and some of the alternatives that are coming online in terms of wind power uh, projects and even uh, um, open turbines in the Bay of Funday, it, it would seem it's the time to actually come up with a plan as to how to shut it down and, and when. But the provincial utility doesn't seem to be in a hurry to close down operations at the plant. Heather McLean speaks for NB Power. Grand Lake is a base load plant. It's an important part of our system that provides power to New Brunswickers. Um, without that plant, we would have to seriously look at, you know, other generation and what we would be doing there. If we lost that plant right now, it would, you know, we would need time to adjust. I mean, the plant remains very important to supplying uh, your home heat. But according to Mr. Whitehead, Grand Lake makes up only 3% of the thermal power generation in the province and 35% of the sulfur dioxide emissions. NB Power's own website clearly shows that Grand Lake makes up a big portion of their emissions. Despite its inefficiencies, Grand Lake will be part of the province's power generation, at least until 2010, when its operating license expires.
It was a fixture in the community of Minto for 75 years, but the huge smokestack that was part of the Grand Lake Generating Station is no more. The stack, part of the now decommissioned power plant, came down this morning in a controlled explosion. It was the most dramatic part of the ongoing demolition of the station. People waited for hours to see the big chimney come down, and as Global's Kara Rapke found out, watching the smokestack fall had residents thinking about the economic future of their community. There she goes! It took mere seconds to be demolished and left nothing but rubble. The smokestack that was once the most recognizable part of the Grand Lake Generating Station took over 200 sticks of dynamite to bring down. After the dust settled, it was hard to imagine that the stack was even there. But for residents that waited for hours this morning to catch a glimpse of the demolition, it was hard to forget the vital role that the generating station played in the community. They built houses here. Power Commission built houses for people to come work because this was a very small community when they built it. It's very sad for the whole community as far as I'm concerned. You know, for the amount of jobs it, was, it affected and the spin-off from the jobs. The Grand Lake Generating Station was built in 1931. Today's explosion is part of a much longer demolition that will eventually tear down the entire generating station. Many people in the region earned a living at what used to be a major economic driver for the area. I haul coal in for 27 and a half years, and then we cleaned the stockpile out two years ago, and, and uh, that's the end of the coal. That's my uh, father and father-in-law, and... Uh... My husband all worked in the coal mining industry, so yes, it, it is the end of an era for sure. The plant shut down two years ago, but the reality of seeing the stack fall has many people worrying about the economic future of the region and wondering what will happen to the site. And looking at the wreckage right now, it may be hard to believe, but this area is slotted to be turned into green space that may include picnic areas and a park for the community. Do we have a few uh, buildings uh, left to demolish? and those will be done over the course of the next uh, 8 to 12 months approximately.